I still consider David Lieberhardt a friend to an extent. Uh, we're not close friends, but uh, I do consider him a friend uh, to an extent. If I saw him, he would recognize me. I don't think he would have any ill will or negative thoughts of me. He would recognize me. He knows who I am. Uh, I've met him enough times where hopefully he knows my name, but uh, sometimes he calls me something else that's not my name. Oh, you're the uh -uh guy. Uh, but I was like, hey, I have a name. It's John. He's like, John, okay, I'll try to remember that. So uh, I think the last time I saw David, uh, he said, okay, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> you know, I hung out with him a two dozen times. Uh, and during those two dozen times, it was me just driving around. And that was years ago. That was years ago at this point. Did I pick up a negative entity hanging around David? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, David Liebehart, um, you know, his, his life is this, that, here, and there, but I didn't sense any negativity in David, and I didn't sense any negativity in his apartment, um, but I did sense a negative spirit in the building he lives in, in the lobby specifically. So on a couple of occasions... David says he'll be right down, just wait in the lobby. So I'm waiting in the lobby, and it is one of the creepiest lobbies I've ever sat in in my life. To the point where, uh, in 2018, when I was doing ghost investigations, I uh, was like, well, what's the coolest place that I know for a fact already is haunted? Let's cut to the chase we don't want to look for a place that might be haunted. What's a place I've already been to that I already know is haunted? Because I do have innate, in-tune, psychic, if you will, abilities to a degree that I can tell if a place is haunted or not. I can feel the vibe of a place immediately. I can feel when spirits uh, walk the freak through me. Okay? And... Um, for example, the historic Hollywood Hotel, the HHH, is a little bit haunted. Um, I sat down in a red velvet chair in the lobby, and uh, I was just checking my PayPal, checking if I have enough money to uh, pay for this. I don't know if it was paying for the room. It was to pay for meals, pay for drinks at the comedy store is what he was about. Do I have enough money to pay for drinks at the comedy store? They're going to rip me off of $100 on the two-drink minimum for all these shows I signed up to go see. And the shows were free, I believe. Maybe one of them cost money. See, that's how they get you. They charge for the drinks. Do the shows cost money? I think most of the shows were free, but buying the two drink minimum at extremely exorbitant prices, you ended up paying um, twenty dollars per show, ten dollars per drink, something like that. I can't remember, but sometimes I would do two shows. I think maybe on one day I did three shows, and that's you know ten, twenty, thirty, four to fifty, sixty dollars just on soda pop or cider, whatever the drink you want to get. And that's zero food. And you're starving to death. And you're forced to have all these drinks. So I did the math and I barely had enough money for the drinks. And I'm so broke by the last day that I'm sleeping in my car. But I was at the ritzy Historic Hollywood Hotel for uh, a good two nights. The Historic Hollywood Hotel is a little bit haunted. And I recorded me holding my mail meter. And I will show that footage and reveal that footage if I haven't already. I don't think I have. 1927 established hotel, historic Hollywood hotel. Five point one. It's a pretty good reading. So there's a couple investigations I've held back, not because they're horrible. Uh, but usually because they're horrible. <laughs> in this case, it's because I didn't think it was phenomenal. But looking at the footage, there's a number of spikes on the stairway. 
that it clearly is haunted. I already felt a spirit walk through me when I'm sitting in the chair while I'm checking my phone. I told the guy, I, I almost immediately told the guy in reception about the spirit that just walked through me because I'm here to check check out the comedy store because it's famously haunted and you know what I, I wanted to see his reaction I wanted to see what this receptionist guy I wanted to see what his reaction would be not to is this place haunted but I wanted his to know if he would uh, shock value just see how sp uh, innately spiritual this particular individual is maybe he has already had personal ghostly encounters himself i didn't know and i understand it comes off a little, little bit rude i've never done this before ever i sit down in a red velvet chair next to a door checking my paypal barely have enough of anything I do a transfer of like $20 or $30, whatever the case, from my PayPal to my bank account. Hopefully it hits in a day or two, and it did, luckily. Just barely in time to pay for a Dr. Pepper that I'm forced to buy for this two-drink minimum. You have to tip on top of the two-drink minimum. You got a tip. So, oh my goodness. Got a tip. So we have this never-ending spiral of I'm so broke buying all these Dr. Peppers, I don't have any money left, just to see if a ghost exists. Gus, <laughs> Gus the ghost. Coming up on the comedy store. Zero points. Zero point four. Here I am, inside of the comedy store, in the original room, in the middle. I told my ghost stories. I actually did see Gus the Ghost. Unfortunately, cameras aren't allowed inside, recording devices not allowed. But this is what Gus looked like. He was a solid figure to the right of me. When I turned, he disappeared. So I only saw him out of the corner of my eye, but I can't say I'm one of the few people that has witnessed Gus the ghost at the comedy store, a very famous ghost. Whoa, 10.3. You see a 0.0, .0 go to a 10.3 spike. This is, in my opinion, the signature of Gus the ghost. Gus the ghost at the comedy store. And I did experience a ghost. I don't know if it was Gus, but I think it was Gus because uh, he was in a black suit with a white hand and I didn't see his face but I did see a black suit uh, how do I know he was a black suit because I could see the f outline and this was in a vision but I saw some moving sparkly things I turned and they were gone saw it again turned gone saw it again turned gone and then I had a vision of Gus the ghost perhaps Gus in my head and the vision wasn't Gus in some rainbow universe. The vision was Gus in the comedy store right behind me. Standing exactly, exactly where he would have been, where this sparkling thing was. And even though it was pitch black, I could see the shape of a suit. Uh, and the hand wasn't neon white. It was just white like my hand is white. Um, so it was a Caucasian hand. And this Caucasian hand in a pitch black suit, trying to look at his face in the vision, his face was pitch black as well. And I didn't see any hat. I didn't see any hat being worn. So Gus the ghost famously wears a hat, but I didn't see any hat. And this was a vision. And by vision, I mean an image flashed in my head, kind of like uh, Zach Bagans purports he sees flashes in his head while he investigates. I was skeptical on uh, concerning such claims, but I believe Zach Bagans now. I believe him. I believe when he's investigating, he sees a flash. The flash might be, go two, two doors down in this hotel. Go two doors down. He'll have a flash in his head, two doors down. 
he'll have a flash in his head of something and it does lead to more evidence or it does lead to coincidences and synchronicities that he couldn't have known or sometimes they're proven to be something supernatural sometimes they're not but i do believe so you have to have a leap of faith to believe in such a thing sometimes they're off the wall it could be in its imagination but at this particular moment i'm seeing a flash after seeing physically with my eyes open sparkly things in the corner of my eye so i see gus the ghost's hand and uh First, it's just down, and then I see it on my shoulder. And I don't ever really see it move like an animation, like a movie. I see like a slideshow. So I'm seeing a vision of Gus standing, and then immediately I see a vision of Gus holding my right shoulder. It's like a slideshow. I saw a, a still image of that and a still image of this. And within seconds of seeing the still image of Gus's hand on my right shoulder, uh, the guy on stage doing jokes asks me to go up and talk with him. And he wanted to interview me more about how the fact that I about the fact that I'm a ghost hunter, a ghost investigator. He found that comedic and interesting because I mentioned it the day prior. And his storytelling was running dry, I guess. He saw me at the back of the room, and he called me up front to make fun of me. And one of the first questions he asked me was, Oh, so have you seen the ghost yet? <laughs> and my response was, Yeah, I just saw the ghost a few seconds ago over there. And the guy's like, What? What? Because the guy knows I'm dead honest to a fault. Even though this comedian barely knows me and has only seen me two days in his life, he knows that I'm a straight arrow. He knows that I don't lie. He knows that I'm willing to be a buffoon and a moron and an idiot at, the, at my expense for laughs and entertainment. Uh, but despite the laughs and entertainment, he knows that I wouldn't make up and lie about seeing the ghost. Uh, he said, what? You saw it? I was like, yeah, just a few seconds ago. And it sounded like a lie because a few seconds ago. But the thing is, Gus the ghost knew I was going to go up on stage. And Gus the ghost was like, there you go. And I, I had a... Uh, I had a theory about Gus even before I ever went to the comedy store. My theory was Gus picks who's the next Robin Williams, who is the next Jim Carrey, who is the next, you know, Dice Man, who's the next big comedian. Uh, is a theory I had, and it's an obvious theory to make. Of course, some invisible supernatural being picks who the next famous comedian is i mean if this is the mascot if you will of the building an invisible force of the building an elusive invisible magical force this gus the ghost why not why couldn't he pick and choose who's the best you know gus just sits there at the back of the room like anyone else and laughs and likes the jokes I got to get in tune with the ghost, the spirit, at the comedy store. Uh, not on any super elaborate level, but obviously on somewhat of a psychic level where it flashed a couple visions in my head. Uh, and what did I learn from Gus the ghost, or just the spirit that contacted me at the comedy store? I learned that it's I'm a huge fan of raunchy jokes. The raunchier, the better. The more disgusting and foul-laced, dis horrendous, crude, disgusting. Uh, that's the type of humor this particular spirit at the comedy store loves. And I'm not happy to admit that um, even I told a crude joke uh, at the comedy store. Did it get a laugh? Yes, it did get 
it did get a laugh. Did get a couple laughs from a couple. See, it was a joke I told that was crude enough for this particular comedy store spirits standards. And I did, I did get a laugh. See, the whole point was I'm the joke. Make fun of me. Um, this particular comedian made a joke the previous day. And uh, I elaborated on that joke. And uh, I don't want to say what that joke is. It's too crude. It's too crude. It's not my humor. I'm not going to lower myself and repeat it. But I I did say a crude joke. I did get some laughs. And it was probably the only laughs I got where I wasn't the butt of the joke. And he, this comedian next to me really didn't like that I got a laugh. Because his previous ten jokes didn't get a laugh as big as the laugh I got. And I'm not a comedian. I'm just a buffoon, right, from his perspective. And so he's like, what? Like immediately he's like, huh? When I, when I actually got a joke. And I think at that point he tried to cut it off and pull the mic away from me. I tried to say before he pulled the mic away from me, you know, in 2011, I had the microphone in my hand at the comedy store. And I'm sitting on the original store in front of the stage on a, ch on a chair in front of the stage with this comedian. And it's at the end of the night. It's like one, th one something a.m. And uh, I had the opportunity. I said, in 2011, I was poltergeist harassed and haunted by two poltergeist demons. They harassed me every single day, 365, not 365 days, but it was like 165 days. It was a great period of time, every single day. Um, 5.30 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. I just repeated my story. And uh, the comedian's response was, Okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and the audience laughed at his response. And they did get creeped out and were a little freaked out by me. But the response of one audience member which was like in the almost front row. Uh, she was like, let's summon a demon. Yeah, let's, hey everybody, let's summon a demon. And you got to understand, this is like a 1.30 a.m. crowd. And there's like 10 people in the room. That's it, okay? And uh, she's not even joking. She's serious. Let's summon a demon. And in my head, the first thing I thought was, there's already a demon here. We don't need to summon one. Uh, but I didn't have the mic at that point, so I couldn't really say anything. But um, the let's summon a demon, girl. Um, as I'm looking at the comedy store uh, Instagram, because they posted a picture uh, that I took of the group. And uh, one picture was taken of me, and I posted that in my comedy store video. But um, my comedy store ghost investigation video. But that girl was an Instagram model. Now, I don't need to use quotes. She is an Instagram model. And she was interviewed by the comedian on his podcast, of all things, while he's trying to get a date. Yeah, right. Um but uh, she was dead serious. She's like, let's summon a demon. And uh, wow, that would have been a crazy turn of events if we uh, went that route. Um, but there are supernatural powers at the comedy store. They're extremely subtle, though. They're super subtle. They're not in your face. We're demons. Hello, we're going to levitate you and punch you in the face with our spirit hands. They are very subtle. Even I wasn't sure if the place was haunted on day one. Uh, it just seemed like a dank, crappy comedy club. Uh, but I could feel somewhat of a weird vibe. On day two, I could definitely sense something. Uh, so I really tried to contact the spirit with no results. At the very end of day three... Night three, the spirit 
decided this, this person's worthy enough to get a flash. Let's let them know we exist. They clearly knew that I was trying to contact them and try to get evidence because I couldn't film, I couldn't record, I couldn't break out any meters. All of that isn't allowed inside the comedy store. I'm lucky I got to get a photograph of me inside the comedy store. That's because the comedian on stage said, yeah, uh, take a picture. Here's another picture. Only because I got permission from him was I allowed to get two photos. Or one photo of me and one photo of me taking a photo of the group. They're a group of interesting people. They all want to break it huge into Hollywood. And maybe some of them will. Who knows? But they laughed and joked and thought I was a total joke. <sighs> they obviously thought I was some vagrant to the point where I'm getting in my car and they're looking at me. Oh, he has a car? He can drive? So they they very to an extreme degree, thought very lowly of me. And when I see the four comedian, well, we have the closing manager and the three comedians sitting in a car, they're carpooling uh, because they can't afford the parking fees or because there's no parking at the comedy store. The parking is so small. There's like, there's like four parking spaces inside the comedy store parking lot. And so even these guys can't park there uh, but Andrew Dice Clay parked there he rolled on up and he parked and he performed like the day after his birthday on a Monday morning I mean it wasn't morning on a Monday evening he performed about 7 p.m. Monday evening maybe it was 8 p.m. I was there I was front row and Andrew Dice Clay made fun of me and I I loved it he was the, the highlight of the entire thing other than having communication with the spirit andrew dice clay making fun of me and he made fun of me for like five minutes ten minutes he communicated he talked about he talked to me and asked me questions for like 10 minutes uh he he saw that i laughed at every single one of his jokes but i laughed at every single one of his jokes because they were new i never heard them uh they weren't the hickory dickory doc jokes uh this was 2018 and uh, every single one of his jokes was about stealing things, about him being a shoplifter. And he has, like, super custom jackets with, like, his name, like, rhinestoned on the back. He has, like, super custom clothing that clearly fits him perfectly, you know. He's like, you think I bought this? You think I bought this? I just walk in the store, I, I put it on, I walk out. Who's going to stop me? I didn't buy this. And it's like a super custom leather jacket. You know, it's like he bought the crap out of that and he was very expensive. And I can't do his act, all right? I probably would bomb even attempting. But that even wasn't his act. That was just material he's working on on a Monday. A comedian doesn't do their best stuff. On a Monday, they're testing their new stuff on a Monday. And I was one of the test audience members, and he liked my reaction. We got some guy in the corner who's drunk on the two-drink minimum, who's probably had four drinks, and he's totally passed out, wasted. They had to pull him out of the club because he was sleeping. He's not laughing at Andrew Dice Clay's amazing jokes. We got some other people. They're hoping Jim Carrey shows up, and it's not going to happen. They don't know any of the comedians on the list, and I don't either at this point. And then Andrew Dice Clay just unannounced parks and shows up because he's feeling nostalgic. And uh, it's an amazing set. Did a great job. So can spirits follow you home? You know, I don't believe the comedy store spirit followed me home, but I can tell you this. Even before I went to the comedy store, I tried to communicate with Gus, Gus the ghost, at the comedy store. Even before I went to the comedy store, I tried to communicate with Gus the ghost at the comedy store. How? How did I try? Well, I saw that there were podcasts, and I saw that there were live Twitch streams from these hopefuls hoping to strike it rich and get famous and 
become major blockbuster Hollywood movie stars. They're Twitch streaming, playing video games on Twitch at the Comedy Store because the Comedy Store is open apparently to these hopefuls, these barely struggling comedians, actors, actresses, whatever the case may be. They let them do their podcasts nobody listens to. They let them do their Twitch streams nobody watches. So I tuned into the Twitch stream. There's like barely any people paying attention to it. And they're at the comedy store doing a Twitch stream. And I, throughout the entire interaction, I'm just mentioning Haunted, Ghost, Gus. And they mention Gus. They mention Hauntings. They mention scary movies. They're talking about scary movies and ghosts. All because I'm subtly dropping these hints. And uh, they mentioned my name. They mentioned my name a couple times. So they're in the comedy store mentioning my name, mentioning Gus the Ghost, mentioning whether they believe in him or not, whether they've had an encounter with him or not. And Gus the Ghost is there listening to the whole thing casually in the background. Oh, this guy. Who's this guy he's asking about me? Who knows? But I was trying to get guesses interested in me even months before I went to the comedy store. So I really, really tried my best to contact Gus in, Gus in multiple ways, and it worked. The last day, the last hour, the last half hour, I experienced communication from a spirit at the comedy store. It was subtle flashes. Now, what did the flashes look like? I've never seen flashes like this in my life. So it was unusual and it immediately got my attention. What did the flashes look like? I mean, they kind of looked like fuzzy, blurry Christmas lights that were all white. If I can uh, really define what it looked like, it looked like there were some really fuzzy, blurry Christmas lights that were white, like a blurry haze around them and a blurry aura uh, emitting from them in a weird formation. What was the formation? It was kind of like uh, an amoeba. You know, an, an amoeba has just kind of like a blob formation. I saw like this amoeba blob formation of Christmas lights blinking blinking on and off if you will kind of look like sparks it's really hard to describe what it looked like but it was faint and it was blurry and out of focus even in my peripheral so that's why i turned i wanted to see crystal clear what it was it vanished and disappeared and wasn't there when i turned and it had nothing to do with the dr peppers i drank that day um they didn't get me uh, on any level of seeing stars out of the corner of my eyes. And so how many times did I turn to see these stars that disappeared every time? A couple of times, two or three times, maybe four times, but it could have been as few as two times, as many as four times. It was enough times to really get my attention where I'm not paying any attention to the comedian anymore. I'm, pay I'm paying attention to whatever's in the corner of the room over here. And the corner of the room happened to have a door. And that door happens to be the green room of the comedians that wait and they don't have to sit in the audience. They sit in this secret little corner door room. And uh, I believe Gus the Ghost was hanging out in this secret little corner door room. Gus the Ghost is hanging out in this secret little green room. I also didn't know that was the green room. That little thing is just the green room for the original room. Uh, I learned that it was the green room for the original room just by using common sense and logic and just thinking about it. And I did see a video with uh, Joey Diaz, um, I believe, inside that room for his comedy uh, video he made. Unless he's in a different green room for the main stage room. The main stage room is much bigger, probably has its own green room. The original room is very small, has a very tiny green room. It's so small that you almost miss it because it's painted totally black. The walls are painted totally black. 
And black is definitely a conducive color for negative spirits. Negative entities love it when you paint the walls black. Um, so if you want the opposite spectrum on things, if you want to attract negative spirits, um, paint your walls black. You know, Crispin Glover had walls painted black, according to people that visited his house. And it doesn't surprise me. Crispin Glover is definitely uh, kind of a dark guy. He, uh, he seems like a mysterious guy that would want to attract such a thing. I don't know if he believes in spirits or not. I have no idea. He's Hollywood. He probably doesn't. But black walls will attract dark spirits. It's a true story. I learned it from first-hand experience. I was telling you about the uh, spirit that stalked me for three months. Um, I had a set for my YouTube show, and I had a bunch of black construction paper, wallpaper, on my walls, and it wasn't black enough. So I even painted it black on top of it being black. So it was black on black. I tried to make it as black as possible, and I left that up there for like two years. And the day... I pull that stuff off, I noticed just spiritual vibes. The room got a lot more peaceful and light almost immediately, having nothing to do with aesthetics or just uh, visually how it looked. I could physically feel a more peaceful environment, and I believe uh, the creaking stopped the night that I pulled all the black off my wall. So uh, that was just there as a YouTube set. And uh, I didn't have nearly as much black paint as the Comedy Store has. The Comedy Store has black paint on the walls and the ceilings and dark floors. It's just dark everywhere. A negative spirit is going to love that. There aren't going to be too many places in Hollywood with black ceilings and black walls painted. So that alone is going to attract negative spirits as well. But, of course, you can look at the history of the building. Uh, there's negativity even when it was white walls and white ceilings. But until next time, this has been John Rasmus Houston.